welcome to week 14 of a Cork City Marathon training plan. Extremely close to the finish line now. And as we get nearer, we've lost one man, and that is our co-host and a man who, you know, the odd time can disappear. And that is Brian Hearn, who is now gone. I'm joined by, of course, our regular and esteemed guest, Ken Nason. How are you? All good. Ready to go. Excellent. <laughs> and I'm joined for the first time by the man who's known as I'm a big deal, Andy <laughs> Goulding. How are you, Andy? Very good. All good now. Welcome yeah, to the show for the first time, filling in for Brian. So it's great to have a man, you know, with so much accomplished in his life with marathon wins, second place in the over 35 in the oh, Cork Marathon. So, and that's one. <laughs> Um, so nice. this is going to be a big long episode, lads, because we had obviously our competition last week, which was for a pair of ASICs gel cumulus, which we asked people to ask their questions, and we got 20 odd questions in, and we're going to do our very best to answer all of them today. So but we will start where we start every week, which is with the plan. So Ken, over to you. Okay, rock and roll. Okay, going into week 14 at this stage now, getting near the end. Monday. Uh, rest day, uh, Tuesday, easy, 35, 40 minutes. Um, coming off that last long run this weekend, being very careful, easy means easy. Um, Wednesday, uh, workout, 15 warm up, 15 warm down, as Damien would say. Um, four, the workout is four by five minute efforts, 60 to 65% effort, three minutes recovery. Again, careful, you're coming off your last long run. If you need to take that a tiny bit easier to recover, all good. Thursday, Friday, rest. Uh, Saturday, easy run, uh, 30 to 35 minutes. And Sunday, we're dropping right down, starting a bit of a taper. We're going an hour and 30 minutes, mm -hmm. easy pace. So, Andy, I come to you, all right? So, you have only recently enough to have to go through a taper, and for some people, it takes a little of adjusting to go to jump way back. You're used to doing, you know, two hours, two and a half hours. How did you adjust to that when you were doing it? Um, for me, taper, I find tapering tough um, mentally and actually physically as well. You know, you kind of feel your body is used to doing bigger mileage. It's just been just have to be patient and like tapering is probably nearly as important as actually training because mm -hmm. you need to be fresh going into a marathon. Some people try and squeeze a bit in near the end. It's it's a waste of time and you're actually risking injury. So yeah. I this, highly recommend. And this is also not a taper. full taper either because, you know, as in at the moment, you're still doing a big enough session. You know what I mean? You're like still the four by five minutes is still a, a good session in that. And then yeah. the long run, which is an hour and a half, should now all of a sudden feel very comfortable and don't try to pick the pace up now because the time has gone down stick to what you've been doing all the time with your long runs you're just now going to be easing it back bit by bit so that your legs when it gets to the day is going to be as fresh as they possibly can that is this week's plan lads week 14 of 16 we're getting that close so it is a bit not really can for us you know we've done 14 weeks with yeah, brian it's... brian not so much obviously um <laughs> So, you know, it's it. We're getting to the end of it, and I kind of weirdly enough, I'm going to start missing this when we we, we don't have to do it, you know. But yeah. anyway, competition wise, last week we had the fantastic competition to win a pair of gel cumulus worth 160 euros. So I done that draw at 8:30 a.m. on Saturday morning, and here is the winner now. <laughs> And congratulations to the winner. Um, great prize. If you can just contact us on either Facebook or Instagram and we will sort out that prize with you. Um, but again, a massive thank you to ASICS for that prize. Um, the part, like wear them if you want to, but recommend it right now. Probably nearly wait till after by the time you get them to wait after the marathon if you're doing the Cork Marathon. So this week we are giving away, away a pair of Brooks running shoes. As this is like you know it's like christmas day all over again over last week so this week is a pair of brooks running shoes 
So you will be able to get the Brooks Ghost here, which is worth 150 euros. And all you have to do is, as usual, is subscribe and comment down below with a question or your name or anything you want to do or a comment in the comments. This is only, again, as all the competitions available on our YouTube channel. So a massive thanks to Brooks, who have kindly given us a pair of Brooks Ghost to give away to the winner, which we again will do the draw at 830 in the morning next Saturday to win that. Lads, another nice prize. Yeah, we'll see which is more popular, Brooks or Athens. <laughs> yeah, and Ooh. it would be interesting. And we'll come to that in a second because there's actually one of the questions similar to that. Um, Andy, you have run in the Cumulus, have you? I have run in the Cumulus, actually. They're a lovely runner, yeah. Mm, so uh, I haven't run in Brooks. Okay, we might have to change So if that. I win the competition, I can try them out for you. Well, unfortunately for you, as a member of the Runner's Diary <laughs> team, you cannot <laughs> win them, but Mary can win them and ask for a size 10. But that, <laughs> so, or Penny. Penny can win it as yeah. well, so there's no problems there. It's right. She needs those two of will remember the very first Brooks shoe was called Brooks Chariot. Is, uh, oh. is that are you that old? Okay, yeah, um, old. <laughs> is that from the Roman times? Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> right, lads, let's get down to the nitty gritty. We have questions that we're going to answer. I'm going to ask them out and we're just going to see how we get on with them, right? Just quite a few, so please bear with us as we ask these questions. The first one is from CM Deneen. Um, if you're injured and you take up cross training to maintain some level of fitness, is there really that much of a difference? using the stationary bike, trainer, or as long as you're exerting equal efforts in the same heart runs. Surely there can't be much of a difference between the pieces of equipment, especially for recreational runners. So the question is, in other words, is is there a difference when you're cross-training between the different machines? Anybody? Can you have an answer on that? Well, Andy, you've been injured recently. What have you done? Um. So I'm on the elliptical, so the cross-trainer, okay. um, and it's just... By choice, um, I tried the bike. Doesn't suit me, but yeah. I I would believe it's heart rate, um, yeah. and just yeah. working your heart rate basically. That's I, 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 I would think you would have to put a lot more power in the bike than you will in the uh, in the yeah. elliptical because I think the elliptical you can get your heart rate up a, a bit quicker. I think no, and I I I try to look at I'm not much. I've never really even on a spinning bike you can do it that lot better if you're yeah. on a spinning bike yeah. you can change the resistance on it a lot easier so i do think you know you, you have to just go off to, as uh, andy said heart rate try to keep your heart rate at, a, at yeah. a pace and i think no matter what you have you're going to get a benefit out of it anyway yeah. but obviously if you're lucky enough to have three of them try which one you enjoy more which i think is important as well yeah but you can swim I, as well if you want non-impact stuff to kind of yeah. maintain your fitness yeah. i think a big thing as well is that to uh, like i was told for cross training like keep the resistance low yeah. like you don't want to be working like your quads mm -hmm. and stuff like that too much so yeah. it's just you're working on your cardio really rather than yeah. you're just maintaining when you're injured rather than actually trying to do as much as you can do when you're running you're not going to get as fit yeah it's not, not going to happen fit, you're no. trying to maintain a bit of fitness yeah. Yeah. as much as you can you're not going to actually more than likely get fitter than you are when you're running right next one i think it's from Sinead power um thanks lads excellent as usual can I ask if sunscreen will be available on the course, just wondering if I should carry my own. The answer is it will not be available on the course, so carry your own. Um, simple as that. Okay. I forgot to use And I put a recommendation as well for the sunscreen. Of course, please. Put it on very early, even at home. <clears> so <throat> let it um, absorb into the skin because if you put it on too close to the start, it starts right. sweating into your eyes. Yeah, which is very pain, annoying. Very painful yeah. actually as well in that. <laughs> But no, very but we'll see you are good for something, Andy. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so next one from Keon. He's selling sun cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, enjoyed uh that lads. Um always impressed that Damien looks like he's doing the video before he jumps into a JCB. I love the headphones. Well, I took that comment to heart, lads. I got emotionally scared for life with that. <laughs> and head to hair, as you can see, I have no change to the slicker more aerodynamic um headphones um that's mainly because my, that's because my jcb is broken outside so i can't go down to it but yes so i have trust me noted that them headphones but they're just very comfortable and that's why i wear them 
but I've now changed it. So he, I take it on board and it's now changed. <laughs> <laughs> Next one from Shane Collins. Great advice again, lads. Well done. It could be useful for someone to know the strategy of the marathon paces on the day. Now, I have been talking to some of the marathon pacers. The plan for Cork Marathon pacers by Cork Marathon is to run even splits. Um, now, there usually is one of the pacers, if there's two or three pacers, one of them might go a fraction faster um, just to help people if they want to do a kind of like a negative, as in not a negative, but if they want to go after it. But the plan for marathon pacers is to run even splits. And that's the plan. Marathon, they can't control every pacer, obviously, and and I know that there is times where pacers go too quick. But talking to the lads, there they've been on, they've been instructed that they are to stick to pace. Um, and have you paced Cork before? I haven't paced Cork, no. Um, but any marathon I have run, even splits, I think it suits me best. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Do, do you think Cork? Because is I suppose split race. Do you think you can negative split Cork? No, definitely not negative. I would say no. 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 No, because the first half is technically the easier half. Mm. Um, the, the hills come at the wrong time in Cork, really, which is like 16 wrong to 20. Yeah, and, yeah, 16 to 20. Yeah. So it comes at the wrong time. If you flip that to the first half and had the second, the first half and second half, I think it would be an absolute cracking fast marathon because yeah. where the hills are. But once you get past up by CIT or MTU now, you're flying. You, you're, you know, you're, you're gone. It's, it's, you know, even a small before that, you're downhill a bit with that as well. By CIT, what's that mile one? 21, 22? Or... 21 or 22, and it's something around that, isn't yeah. it? No, 20, yeah. even earlier. Yeah, even earlier than that. It's about 20, actually, I think. 20, I think, yeah. 21, uh, in around that anyway. But, so, the plan is to go even splits. But again, I will recommend you on the morning, if there's three paces there, go up and ask the paces themselves and go, look, lads, what's your plan? Because they might turn around and go, look, we are going, to, I'm going to go a little bit quicker mm -hmm. to build a little bit of time because we know we're going to lose a few seconds in the four mile period. Or someone might go, no, we're going to stick it here. So talk to the pacers and get what they're about to say. But again, even splits is probably the best way to do it. Okay. Next one from Rory McGuinness. Great podcast again, lads. Um, lots of brilliant info. Can't wait for the prize. Would love to win it. Quick question. Do you need to break in race shoes or can shoes be made these days worn straight out of the box, particularly super shoes? Andy, as a super, super shoe wearer. Um, I personally, I, I wear Vaporfly 2s most of the time I'm racing and I where I'm straight out of the box, which a lot of people don't recommend, but I always wear them. So I'm used to them. And okay. in my eyes, they're all the same shoe. So that, I actually like having a fresh pair. I 100% agree with you on that. I think if it's a totally different pair of shoes, i.e. if you're going from a Nike to a Sacconi, then you might have to do, you know, a run with the Sacconis. But shoes nowadays yeah. are so cushions are so comfortable there's very little breaking in like Ken back in the 1950s when he had to do like there was a lot of breaking in into the shoes so and, and I'm the a joke obviously with the year but Ken you know when you were running then there yeah. was a lot more breaking in the shoes I would they, were, they were stiffer but I, I still would like I still would advise that somebody do their best to wear the shoe with for at least once slash twice beforehand if possible like you know, like someone going from Alpha Fly trees, right? To be from vapor flies, people have picked up injuries because the stack height is oh, bigger. Totally different shoe, but that's that's yeah. a, like yeah. that's yeah. that's a different. But you're and he's used to wearing the same shoe all the Correct. time. Yeah, then and then that's getting. yeah. So yeah. that's easier if you're wearing if you're going from a vapor fly two yeah. to a vapor fly two different color. Yeah, then that's the, that's no different. Major ninety nine percent of the times yeah. you're perfect, but if yeah. you're changing the shoe in any way that can slightly change your your stride, yeah then you're going to need to go out and do a speed session before it or, you know, or something. And you need a bit of pace into it. You need something to know, right? Oh, yeah, right. I noticed that. It's no point in just going out and doing an easy 2K or 3K. Have to go and put a bit of effort into a suit. Yeah, but with these long runs, you can test these shoes anyway. Yeah. At the right thing. So, yeah. So the answer is, if you're sticking with the exact same shoe, 
very little issues that you will have with breaking an issue because you are so used to it. Right. Thanks for asking my question. Very helpful. A question for Brian. What was his gel strategy for Manchester? Well. No, lads. Okay, so I am going to play something right now if I can find it. Here we go. Okay. No, one sec there. No, there we go. No, that's <laughs> great. We're great planning. All right. So I'm going to try to play this. Hope people can hear it. This was Brian's gel strategy for Manchester. Okay, so on the marathon, I took a 90 gram, the PF90 screw top gel with me and I had one of them actually before the race in the holding area so that's the equivalent of your standard three gels that a lot of people carry obviously the 30 gram gel so I had a PF90 precision fuel 90 gram gel in the hour leading up to the race finished it with about a quarter of an hour to go and um, so that was the equivalent of three gels before the race started and um, in the race then I carried another PF90 so again it's packs so it's like three gels in one so I sipped that and again there was I think that's the good thing about these things like you know you can put the top back on sometimes when it's the single gels you rip them open and you feel you have to consume them all within the next minute or two so with the PF90 I sipped that over the first hour and a half of the uh, marathon which is the halfway point basically for me so over the thir first 13 miles I sipped on another PF90, which was another three gel. So that was three before the race, three in the first half of the race. And then I took two more after that. So it turned out for me that I was basically a gel every half hour. And I think that's what Precision were recommending to me. And then again, when we did this last year, I had been kind of taking one every 45 to 50 and I was feeling the slump. So bringing it down to every half hour made a massive difference to me. Um, so that was eight gels over the full marathon. So it, it would have been more than the one I would have normally taken. It okay. So that was Brian's answer for that. And that is exactly what I think at the moment that um, somebody should be getting into every half an hour. Andy, your plan usually would be? Um, I'll be perfectly honest. A lot of the time, like that, every half an hour, but closer to the end, I judge my gut. And I see, like, I might skip the last one if it's going to risk turning my stomach. So I kind of play it by year as I'm running as well. Obviously, you don't want to wait till you feel you can need it. But, like, if I'm into 22, 23 miles and I'm feeling okay, mm. I might not risk the last gel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think once you get past it, when you have about a half an hour to go, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you don't need to squeeze another gel in if you don't need to. But if you've been fueling yeah. enough before that, you're absolutely perfect. So that was Brian's strategy. Right. Next question. Um, Bally in need of new pair of runners. Any tips on what to think about when running to take the mind off it? Some people do counting, etc. Et you lads have any tips? So, Ken, did you have any tips when you were running? Um, keep, keep looking at people in front of you and basically don't look behind. Just basically in a marathon, mm -hmm. if things are getting struggling, like just keep aiming at the next person that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And like if you can get up to that next person in a race, it's motivating you to keep going. Yeah, 100%. Andy? Well, I don't want to tell you what goes through my head in a marathon because I might get locked up. Yeah. But <laughs> the, <laughs> a, good, <laughs> a good tip I get, it kind of gets me into rhythm, is listen to people's feet. So if you're in a group and you're listening to the, the rhythm of their feet it keeps you in the rhythm and it, sometimes i kind of zone out listening to that mm. uh, it works for me anyway i sing um so sometimes when i'm out internally own, sometimes when i want to sing out loud um, <laughs> and if I, have, I, I have got caught a couple of times when i thought there's nobody around and they would have the headphones on and there's a couple of songs that, you know, there is a few high notes, which I would try to reach. And let's say I could look over and there's a person standing at a bus stop, which I have not had seen. And they're looking at me like a strange man. So 98% uh, of the time it is internally to myself and I'm singing and I will just sing. I mean, <laughs> random songs. Like, and it just keeps me distracted and just keeps my mind off it. Um, that or when it gets tough, I'll cry. So either of them, they're the things that keep my mind Can off. Can I play something on Spotify right now that you'd sing? No, <laughs> no, <he laughs> wants that. <laughs> right, we carry on. We we go through these. Right, favorite do it all shoe, Andy. So my favorite shoe 
it's a do it all shoe as in I, I, I'm presuming the person's asking a shoe that can literally do everything for you i.e. run easy run a bit quicker I know you're not really um, saying much of race but is there any shoe that would would be could have in your head can do it all I have an answer anyway that's yeah it's hard for me like I, I literally have three different types of runners one for my easy one for my sessions and one for my um, racing but I'm running on, on cloud monsters at the moment and I feel like they're a very versatile runner just for my easy runs mm. that's just my and that's at the moment but saying that next time I need a new pair of runners I'll probably try something different Yeah. Um, but when it comes to racing I would be me personally I'd be either Nike Alpha Fly or Vapor Fly okay Ken do you have any answer? well I've experimented recently with all the different super shoes like even though I'm super unfit and like I'm definitely more in favor of the vapor fly too. Mm. Um, you know, for yeah. like a, sh- a shoe that I could use, but obviously not for easy runs. Yeah. So my favorite and the thing I think is the one most versatile shoe in the whole of shoe world is the Sacconi Speed. I would have put a hundred quid that it was Sacconi, you were gonna say. Yeah, and the reason I say Sacconi speed is a couple of reasons. One, it's a nylon plate, so it's not carbon, right? So the nylon plate is a bit more flexible and you can do your easy runs on it as well. But if you want to do a bit of pace, i.e. a long run or you know it's a session or anything like that, you can pick the pace up because the nylon plate gives you that assistance. So your legs then feel fresher after it than it would have if you just done it in a pair of anything, you know, I can Cumulus or Pegasus or anything like that. Um, so Sagoni Speed for me is the one of the best do it all shoes that you can get on the market at the moment. Um that again you can race and if you wanted to. What's the but, theory behind the nylon plate? So the nylon plate gives you a bit of assistance. Yeah. But so when you go to the carbon race day shoe, then mm-hmm. you're still getting another lift because if you wear yeah. the carbon shoes constantly, I've never worn, like the nylon. Yeah. Thing. So if you wear the carbon shoes in a session, when you get into race day, you're not actually getting any extra benefit. Okay. So when you wear the nylon plate, you get a little bit of assistance to make with yeah. just say your seven minute miling a fraction easier. Okay. That then when you go into the carbon plate, you're going to then run that seven minutes. It's going to be like a breeze to you. Because it's just so much easier. So that's yeah. the idea behind it, that you still work hard in a session a little bit, but your recovery then is way better because of the nylon plate. So that's my answer to that. Right. I'm going to move on because we've still have quite a few questions to go. Right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Savage Prize, lads. 13 has always been lucky for me. I have a question about the longest run being three hours. If someone's shooting for a four hour marathon, for example, and they're running the long one slower than race pace, their longest run will be less than 20 miles, quite a bit shorter for 430 plus goals. For us slower runners, is it okay going into a marathon to have not hit the distance of 20 miles? Is it best to leave it at three hours and trust the training or would it have to be any benefit to pushing that longer? Now, I know we've briefly answered this before, but can you know, give the answer again? Um. Yeah, like for someone who's starting out what we're doing and program-wise, like four or hours, five hours plus, it's it it's going to be okay just to do three hours. Like you're not you're not it's not going to be a concern whether you run twenty miles or twenty two miles. You know, mm. it, we can't we can't expect you to go and run four or five hours. Yeah, and know? as we said, Brian and myself, yeah, our longest runs when we done our first marathons was and we Brian went four hours for seventeen miles. Yeah, so you know, again, the adrenaline of the day would make you. Andy, you've done marathons when you were. You know, what was your first marathon you done? Uh my as in time or where? Uh, time. Uh three fifty eight. Yeah, so you're around that four hour mark. Mm. Um would what what was your highest mile mileage? Um I think I might have got to twenty, but I wouldn't have done it like if I Just did, it was time. only one. Yeah. And like that was my biggest fear going into my first marathon because I have in my head I still have another ten K or mm. like how am I gonna manage? It's so different on the day. Yeah. Uh, adrenaline and you're fully prepared for it like you have a big block of training behind you so I think everyone has that fear in their head and it's natural to have it but I wouldn't be worried yeah, and as yeah. you said the three hours is enough, is is right like yeah, yeah as a beginner exactly. you're probably only going to get the 17 18 a lot of people yeah 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 100% right we go on 
Um, Marathon Man, we're going to answer your question yourself as in privately because we just need to do a little bit of um, math for yourself. So Marathon Man was looking, looking for an ADM Cork Marathon pace, race target time. Last four big runs was 19 miles and he gave his pace and stuff like that. We'll have a chat about that and we'll let you know roughly what we think um, because to be honest with you, we have not been able to talk before today we came on here to have a conversation about that so we'll come back to you about that one so don't you worry right so Faye what are your favourite daily trainers to use and why Ken uh, Asics Keanos because I over pronate and they kind of give me the best uh, cushioning and stuff yeah okay. Andy everyday runner I wear uh, you know yourself I sometimes just call out to the shop and ask it to give me a pair of runners. So I'm currently, as I said, in on Club Monsters, but I'm fairly flexible with easy runners. Um, I'd like to try different ones. Yeah, and I'm the same as Andy. I'll try everything and anything. Um, go to at the moment. I like the new Q. I like the new um glycerins from Brooks. They're really nice. Um, so again, I will try. Any, I pretty much if you I try them all. The new Triumph 22 actually came into the shop today, which I'm very excited about. So, um, <laughs> Andy, pop out there next week and, you know, you'll have to Damn give it. your new shoe there. Um, more money. <laughs> more money, so you can give it. Right. Jamie O'Driscoll, brilliant advice, keep them coming. Which spots of the marathon route would you suggest to watch out for in terms of running up a hill and conserving energy for, with the exception of Jack Lynch Tunnel? So, straight off, and I'll answer this, it is it is 16 to 20. You yeah. just need to <laughs> anywhere in there, and that's where you need to watch. I will also say, everyone thinks Jack Lynch and Jack Lynch Tunnel it's fine. It's grand. I actually think nearly a worse is the one straight after it, which is up to when you come off it and you have to go up to man. I just, I don't know what it is. It just feels yeah. like it's on forever. That's and the that, worst drag. Yeah. yeah, it's such a long drag. But look, it's still not, a, it's not that you're not going to be watching your pace in it. But um, the one behind the county hall is a nice little pace drag up to that. Then you turn, is it left up to the rendezvous? I think is there one of them pubs up there or something? Yeah, I can't remember. rendezvous, yeah. That another one is another little snappy little climb. But then once you get to that, it's a right turn, small little drag, and then you're home and home is really for flatness after that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so mile 16, 20. I, Andy, I think the one on towards, the one towards Ballyvihan, when you just come off and it's that little it's start, up. just up into the community centre, up by yeah. Tory Top Road, yeah. yeah. That's, I would say that's probably the worst one, yeah. Yeah. So they're not massive hills. There's no massive hills in Cork. There's just these short, snappy ones that if you just knock it back a few seconds for it and you're going to be able to recover on the other side of yeah, it. Yeah, don't maintain um, the pace on the hills. No, yeah. no. Okay. Definitely not. Or knock them back and then you will make that ground up later on. So next one um, is great episode again, lads. What are your thoughts on race day shoes for someone to hope hoping to run somewhere between four hours and four hours thirty? Will they bring much benefit, or should you, should you stick to a daily training for marathon? That is a question that is totally up to you. Yeah. Um. So I can't. I, I. I'm not going to give an answer to that per se because you're the one who has to be comfortable in the shoe. Four and a half. The four to four and a half hours in a shoe that's not very comfortable is not going to be very good. And no matter what shoe that is. So what you're looking for is you're looking for comfort. Yes, if you can get the slight benefit from a carbon shoe or a nylon plated shoe, then take it. But one, you should have, you should have worn it. You should be wearing that for people who are watching this as we record. We're recording this on the Friday night. They're going into their longest run on the Sunday. Yeah. Then you try for your that shoe that you're going to race on race day. If you were whatever race you whatever shoe you wear on that Sunday is pretty much the shoe you should be wearing on the race day. Um, because the la the Sunday of your longest run is the gear. We've said this something times. It's what you wear on race day. From start to finish of that run, you need to be wearing on race day to see if there's any issues. Any Anything to add, lads? No, any I, issues is the big thing. Yeah, yeah I, I just think like the super shoes, they're so different to wear. So as you said, if you're not used to them, like yeah. they'll they have an aggressive rocker, they'll yeah. put you in a different style of running. And like if you're comfortable with them, happy days, but don't feel like you have to be wearing them either. Like no. and also lads, you must remember some of them are very narrow. So if you yeah. have any way of a pronation, when you get tired, your legs are going to start going everywhere. So just bear that in mind as well. So look, 
if I was you, this video will probably go up Saturday night, so you probably you might watch this before the Sunday long run. Whatever it is, wear whatever you plan to wear on the race day on the Sunday of the long run. Right. Do you recommend running with a hydration vest? I'm aiming to finish in under four and a half hours. That's exactly the same answer just there a while ago. Mm -hmm. If you want to wear a hydration vest, wear a hydration vest, but wear it before the day to see if you get any chafing or anything in around. Hydration vest is very handy for someone who wants to carry water or even carry for someone who can't take gels and have to drink carbs to, um, you know, carb drinks. It's ideal. Have it with you. But try it again before. And remember, there's plenty of water around the course. If you're only carrying it for water, you're not going to need it really on the day. But if you're carrying it to carry your carbs, then go for it. But again, long run has to be tried. Mm -hmm. Again, anything that lads? Not all good. Yeah, as you said, like if it's just for water, you probably don't need it. But um, it's just going to be added kind of re restriction on you but as you said if it's fueling and stuff definitely go for it if you've done it in your long runs <clears throat> yeah um would a three-quarter marathon on the 19th of may be close be too close not racing just finishing it i've missed a couple of long runs lately so that would be two weeks out mm -hmm. don't do it like again you're trying to make up for something at two weeks out like that might leave you heavy you know yeah no, look. If you signed up for it and you want to do it, you're. But look, we. Yeah. I would say no. But yeah. Um, if you do want, to, you're going to do this at a canter as a slow as you possibly can. If Sorry. it's a slow, easy run. Yeah, yeah. use Definitely. it as your slow, easy run. But nineteenth of May, which is what well, we have you done for an hour and a half. Yeah. See if you're going in much more than that, you are going to be going tire legs into again the next week. So just bear that in mind. Yeah. Make to this like. I think it's probably a bit much. I wouldn't do it anyway, is my honest answer to you. I think if you yeah. had it again this week, you'd be grand, but for me, it's too close. It's not worth yeah. it. This week should be our longest run, yeah. Yeah, it's not worth it. Right. Interesting to know, best-selling, most popular shoe in the shop currently and for the last few years. That's directed at myself, from Damien Murphy. The answer to that is, at the moment, the most popular shoe brand probably is Hoka, which is just after going nuts um so but probably the top at the moment be hoka asics and uh brooks would be your top top three brands that we would probably do with Sacconi next then after that um but yeah so kind of each of them brooks ghost would be the most popular popular out of brooks um gt 2000s to cumulus in uh, asics and then you would have the clifton and the bondi out of hokas and then you'll have the Triumph and probably the Speed, which would be the most popular out of the Sikonis. Um, But Hawkers at the moment are, are just incredibly popular. But again, don't suit everybody. But yeah, they are so popular for us at the moment. Um, Massive stock issues, but then that's a different story. Right. We go through again. Super prize, lads. <laughs> Loads of questions, but I have another couple. Is there any benefit of doing more than 20 miles for your longest run? What's the max you guys have done in preparation? We've answered that. So look, you know we've given that answer already secondly question is regarding alcohol i presume you should just cut it out for the next few weeks or is the odd drink here and there really going to make odds okay um ken what's your as a coach and uh, the odd drink glass of wine two things as long as you're not drinking 10 points every day you should be fine <laughs> i 100 percent agree with you um i think one two drinks on a Sunday night, Saturday night, after your long run, not an issue. I think, you know, I think I gave it, I did give it up a four for one of my marathons and it just, look, I just think sometimes you have to reward yourself and just enjoy it. You have to not. be able to relax because if you're too yeah. stressed about things, you will, um, uh, things might, like it won't go as well if you're exactly. stressing. Andy, well, ask you anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think none of us, like, you still have to live your life. It's a marathon. Obviously, don't go on the lash like the week leading up to the marathon, but no, you still need to live your life. Enjoy yourself. 
Right, I'm literally going to fly yeah. through because we, we, we still have a lot of questions here. So I'm going to fly through. Damien, any plans to run a marathon end of 2024? No. Um, has, your, oh. has the YouTube inspired you to get back on the wagon? No. Okay, Brian, <gasps> are you tempted to go abroad at the end of the year for the next marathon following recent PB? Brian has answered that question with a big fat yes. He would love to go back. He loves. He was definitely going to go abroad again. And um, picking the right course is something that is obviously he likes going abroad because you can get the flatter courses over there. Ken, how many marathons would you advise per year or does it depend on each individual? Depends on each individual, but I'd say two myself. Yeah, that's um, Andy. Um, two is the ideal. Yeah. I've done yeah. more myself, but two is the optimal. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Hi, lads. Would you recommend any recovery treatments in the week's Leading up to the race, hit 33k mark this week, no issues. Thankfully, but wondering, is there any cold therapy treatment, therapy session or something like that that give the legs a boost or a sports massage with Ken Nason? Um, so, Ken, as the sports massage oh. therapist, is there any benefit? Yeah, yeah, totally. There's a benefit like there's the benefit with recovery boots. There's a benefit going into ice baths. There's a benefit doing uh, Epsom sauce. But with sports massage, there's totally benefit. But the benefit with sports massage, well, people have to realize if they're going to a physio or they're going to anyone with sports massage, do not wait till the last week of the marathon. If you're going to get sports massage, it will help. It will loosen the legs and get things moving. But do it the week before the marathon. Do it like like seven, ten, eight, ten seven days to previous. ten days out. Yeah. 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 Ten days, I think, is the, is the sweet number for it, really, I think. Yeah. Right. And then as well, as well, come back to compression boots and all that recalled therapy. It does good, but you do need to be doing it regularly to get the most. You need to be doing it regularly to so, get back. Yeah. yeah, right. Carlo Manny, great question again, or great episode again, lads, with loads of great advice. I've done 18 miles at the weekend and had a back or a bad pain in my left calf. Does compression socks help to eliminate this, Ken? Uh, yeah, it's going to get blood flow things, but it just depends how bad this is. It knows the time. We're three or four weeks out. Get someone to look at it. Call your physio, call me, call anybody to get a look at it. Yeah. Um compression sleeves do work, yes. Um, but I would again it depends how bad what you're doing. It, yeah, it's also can mask something that could be yeah. a lot worse a lot of yeah. times. So I would you get, get it it, now. Yeah, I would get it seen and I would then wear the compression sleeve after it. Yeah. Yeah. Um Hi runners, are your team? Love this episode and I win a pair of runners. My question, hill workouts, how important are they? Is there a benefit even if doing flat road races mostly? 100% answer is yes. Even if you are doing the flattest race in the history of the world, hill sprints and hill sessions are the best thing you can possibly do. Andy? Yeah. Uh, they're, to they're, they're not fun, but they are usually beneficial to you. Yeah. Um, it's just going to strengthen you up, but definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. Ken, there's a term hills pay the bills, right? So definitely, 100%. you can like your turnover will increase and you'll be stronger on the flat from doing those hill sessions. Yes, I did. Right. Um, uh, Margaret Regan, uh, great info, guys. Thanks. I got a new pair of Alpha Flies at the race. Do you think it's significant to do 15 miles in them, or would it be hard to do it the longest run I in them, i.e., 20 miles this week? Um, bad to this whatever you need whatever you're wearing on your race date you do yeah. in your 20 mile run yeah it, simple as that and, and I'm not but I'm just going on uh, <laughs> quick one Les is there a gel station on route and if so what brand of gels is being used I've asked Eamon that there is no gel station so bring your gels and have your own gels or have someone who can hand you gels Simple answer to that. Teresa Rending. Hi, lads. Great episode. Just wondering if you have any advice on the best place along the course for family to support you, if only doing the half. Andy? Yeah, so I think the sex would probably be the best spot um, because you can obviously see them as a start and you can catch them on the finish then because if you go somewhere at a certain point, like further out on the course, you're not going to see him at the finish point. So it's just a yeah. nice, and you get, there's a good atmosphere in the room there though. Yeah, I, I'd be the same. I, look, I think ideally whether someone probably needs the most support is a straight road, but then you're not going to see that person when you're finishing. So, you know, I do think try to see you when you see, see the person. Time. Yeah, you want to see the people twice. Um, so yeah, so Sextend or around the Elysian or somewhere around that kind of way, and then you can head over to the finish line to enjoy that. Um. Okay, next question. There's a lot of questions to be fair to it. 
Uh, question for this week's pods. I've been following a separate plan and got a 3 hour run in two weeks ago, but it's picked up back straight in the following week. Since then, I've done very little running, but I'm slowly back into it after going to a physio. The plan is to get a final long run two weeks prior to the marathon and all going and other runs at ease base. Have you any advice on recovery after getting a minor injury at late stages of a marathon plan? Um, Ken? Yeah, like, so someone someone needs to be, like, with that, uh, if a physio and things like that, they need to be telling them where this injury is at and what things. If they have a running coach or anything like that, they need to be advising them with things. But again, if this person wants to shoot us where this injury is at and how much they're capable of doing at the moment and things, and we can kind of cater that a bit better for them, you know? It's, it's kind of, if you have a lot of work done at this stage, like, going out and trying to hit something long two weeks out may kind of hurt you on the day mm. or may make that injury worse. Yeah. I just think, no, right now you've done your three hours and just yeah. trust that. And I don't, yeah. again, it's don't yeah. catch up. It's no cramming here. No, in this. There's no cramming. So, you know, again, and I also would say we can't like getting it right. So any advice on recovery? Recovery is just pure stretch. You know, yeah. get foam rollers. Make sure you're getting, you know, as much assistance from your physio that you possibly yeah, can. You, need to make sure, so, you make sure that injury is okay for the it's day. sorted. Runs. And then you'll be okay for that. Right. We're nearly there, lads. We are very nearly there. I think we've only two questions less. Would you, would you guys recommend the so-called super shoes for average runner? I've answered that earlier. So I'm going to leave that one. So Jean and Manny, Head back to a small bit if you've missed that question. So your answer there. Um, right. So the most important question of all, lads, and this is the big one um, for Barley Boy. Can Damien have a word with his brother and his choice of socks? Balano and Connor are not prepared for the ridiculous colour scheme that he has going on. So, Andy, what's your point of view on this? Do you know what? He pulls them off, I must say. And they always match his shoes, his singlet. He's a very fashionable guy. Must yeah. say, a lot more fashionable than his brother. Just, just say. But who's faster? Um, Ken. Yeah, well, he, anytime I see him, he always claims he's the better looking. Well, and he can have that. He can have that all day long. I couldn't. And a week ago, a couple of days ago, he claimed like because he was so busy in work, he needed to get to me to sort him out. And if he did. He would have beaten you glass race. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, he he just, like, you know, so we'll have to try that theory out another time. Okay, I I will happily take Jonathan up in that theory <laughs> any day of the week. Um, I, unfortunately, am also very busy, and I didn't get to see Ken, and I also didn't get to run. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, no, no I, I, Jonathan, I will say this much. I do think the socks and the shoes are all perfectly matching, and I do think, yes, they are lovely and loud and go with it all day. You know, you know, I have no issues with it, Johnny. Keep it going and ignore all these lads, you know, slagging you over with your lovely fancy <laughs> socks. So, lads, that was a long question and answer episode. I think it was 20 odd questions there. So, look, I know this is a lot longer than usual. So, again, thanks for everyone. If they have listened to it or they've tuned out about 20 minutes ago, I can understand that as well. Um, Right. So, a couple of things. Make sure you go back to start to listen to the plan that we've obviously given as well. Competition week this week is to win a pair of Brooks Ghosts. And also don't forget the most important thing with the Cork Martin, that's the Cork City Marathon official after party in Deep South on June the 2nd, starting at roughly around one o'clock. Um, we will be there with Andy in tow and Ken will be there and Brian will be there if he turns up. Um, so and a song from Damien and a song from yeah. me. Um, so we will have plenty of fun in there. We're gonna have a guest with unbelievable spot prizes. We mentioned one during the week, which is a 16 week coaching plan with Karen McKeown, a 16 week dietitian plan of Benley S Smith, and also two VO2 tests in amongst that as well. We also have got another vote or uh, another prize which is going to be a three-month membership to District Gym, which is worth over €300. Euros. So that's the second prize. There's more on the way as well. But there are just two of the prizes so far that you can win on the day. But you have to be at the event. Simple as that. Lads, thank you. Sorry for keeping you so late. All good. Rest up. You're welcome. And we will see you next week. See you next week. Take care, lads. All right.